So like Justin was just talking about with CDN, um, that if you've ever downloaded anything from a website, straight download, YouTube, stream anything, it's all CDN. Um, but peer-to-peer -peer is file sharing that is strictly between computer to computer. Um, each one of the computers is called a peer, so it's a peer-to-peer. -peer. It's not necessarily two computers, it could be a huge network of computers, um, but the biggest thing, you, the big difference between a peer-to-peer -peer and a CDN is the fact that a CDN is strictly off of the server, um, while a peer-to-peer -peer network is only uh, content shared between two different machines. So, like I'm talking about, you know, something like a CDN or server-based is pulling that content down from a from a server somewhere, whether whether it be a CDN or just a general server. And when you click a hyperlink, it says download this .exe. Uh, while a peer-to-peer -peer network is just strictly computers connected together, sharing content in uh, in any form. Um, there can be like a router in here, as long as that router does not hold any data that is being transferred. If the router holds the data, it becomes server-based. Um, so peer-to-peer -peer networks um, have the ability to uh, distribute enormous amounts of content um, if you think about everything that's on your individual computer and compare it to what your roommate or your best friend has on their computer, it's probably nowhere close to the same. But with a peer-to-peer -peer network, you can share all of that information between each other freely um, at a pretty high speed since you're not bouncing from server to server to server. Um, and with speed involved, you have an average um, for our sake and for our math, we'll say that everyone has a megabyte down and a megabyte up. Um, so your capacity of your peer-to-peer -peer network is the number of uh, the number of peers you have being n um, times the number of megabytes or megabits of speed that you have um, among your network. And of course, if someone only has a half a megabyte up, but you have two down, you're only going to be able to pull that file at a half down because they can only upload it so quickly. Um, but with a peer-to-peer -peer network. It's just straight connections between each other. So like I said, you're not worrying about the speeds of a server or connecting to something um, in a different country or across the oceans. Um, BitTorrent is one of the most popular peer-to-peer -peer clients or um, ways to get a peer-to-peer -peer file. Uh, yes, technically you're hopping through servers there, but they're not storing any information. Uh, it's strictly transferring the information from one computer to another, just using a BitTorrent client uh, BitTorrent files to say, hey, you're going to map it from here to here to here to here to here to here as my final peer, and you're just going to download it. Just keep basically streaming it from this one machine to this machine. Um, with BitTorrent a lot, you'll see um, it says the very first one talks about it can lead to peers that have the content of the torrent. So if 10 people have whatever .exe that you're looking for. Uh, and they've all uploaded to a BitTorrent site or they've all cached it as a BitTorrent uh, file, you can download portions of it from each of them, thus speeding up your download. Um, if you have five different people that are all holding a file and they're pushing it up, uh, you can get it at, in theory, five times faster speed because you're not waiting for that one individual connection. Um, so when a swarm is first formed, uh, some peers that are known as the seeders or the ones that are sending it up um, have different chunks or blocks um, of the content that they are uploading. Um, and while peer pressure is going to swarm it, um, it simultaneously downloads chunks of it that are missing by other peers and then uploads it to other people that don't have it. So going back to that main map, if you can kind of picture it, if I have parts of the file, they're all just kind of getting spread around. It's not, like I said, it's not one-to-one. -one. It's a straight handshake where every computer can talk to every single other one and share the content as quickly as possible. Um, and you, as a peer, as your machine, you can leave or jo and rejoin the swarm um, of a BitTorrent file at any time. Um, so along with that comes distributed hash tables um, and then structured peer-to-peer -peer networks. Uh, so like a structured peer-to-peer -peer network would be uh, a small business that doesn't want to use uh, server-based uh, file management and they just keep everything locally but they connect it peer-to-peer -peer so that they can share their files <coughs> excuse me, among each other. Um, so a tracker is really hard to, to decentralize in a peer-to-peer -peer system because it would take too much effort 
to keep the index of every single peer up to date. So your tracker is what's holding all the information. Hey, who has what files? Where can I get those files from? Um, so instead of having an actual like centralized thing, which would be your file, uh, your server file system, it just it's talking to every machine uh, at all times in order, in order to keep your index of your individual machine uh, up to date. Uh, the use of the term hash table uh, refers to the fact that the basic functionality of a peer-to-peer -peer network um, and of the index of that is to map a key to a value much like a hash table. If you ever implemented a hash table in um, a program, you know it's like you have your header it's storing all of your information, it's something very small, you have that very small thing that's storing, hey, this is what this machine has. Uh, distributed hash tables were created in order to solve the problem that uh, indexing created, um, or that the creation of distributed indexing um, performed well in order to increase the performance um, of a peer-to-peer -peer network. Now with this, uh, each node keeps only small amounts of information about what every other node has. Uh, they can each quickly look up the entries uh, that are among the network that have all been indexed uh, in a distributed hash table. Um, so a DHC solution uh, is known as a CORD. It's the overall index um, that is listing all of the swarms in a computer that may uh, join, to, join that swarm to download the content. Uh, a key is looked up in the index of the torrent description of the context, uh, and then it uniquely identifies a swarm from which the content can be downloaded. So if you have five different groups of people all trying to download the same file, but you're like, hey, this one's the best fit for me, it'll throw you in there, and then it realizes, oh no, you should be in this one, you can hop between swarms, um, and that's done with the help of a distributed hash table. And then your value is stored in the index of each key so that the rest of the peers um, can continue to make up that swarm and other people can join or leave your swarm in order to get the, the most ample download times. And that is it for us, just our code. I'll pull that up real quick. addresses Presentation is our code. Okay, great. So let's applaud the presenters.